or the ionizing effect as you can guess from the name itself it is the effect in which the radioactive rays form the ions when they interact with the matter so the ionizing effect of the radioactive rays it refers to the ability of the radioactive rays to produce the ions when they interact with the matter so your radioactive rays for example alpha particles beta particles and gamma particles these are forms of ionizing radiations because these radiations are able to produce ions which means they have enough energy to remove the electrons from atoms or molecules which give rise to the positive and negative ions so we are defining the ionizing effect precisely in the context of radioactive rays so in that context the ability of those radioactive rays to produce the ions when they interact with the matter the matter can be in any form it can be solid liquid gas so that process would be called as ionizing the ability would be called ionizing effect and the process would be called ionization so ionization of atoms that produces you would have guessed it by now positive and negative ions the radioactive rays alpha particles beta particles and gamma particles because of them having different mass and different charge they have different ionizing abilities now if we make a comparison then the bottom line would be for the comparison will be having the maximum ionizing ionization uh, ionizing effect or the ability to ionize the maximum would be for the alpha particles and they have it greater than the beta particles and they have it greater than the gamma particles so alpha particles have the highest ability of ionization compared to the gamma particles and matter of fact the gamma particles they do not produce these tracks you see in the diagram for the gamma particle for the gamma rays they are not producing these tracks in the medium because they are having very low ability or very low ionizing power and you compare to the alpha particles they have the highest one the reason because they are with the highest mass so with this one they have the highest mass in comparison and the gamma radiations they have the lowest mass so the analogy is uh, think about ionization as the ability to break down okay so the medium in this case you can visualize as a brick wall now you have to you have three different options you have on one side you have the heaviest stone over here then you have a small stone and then you have some rays okay so for gamma rays I shouldn't be drawing the stone because these are not particles these are rays but let's say you have a dot here a very point object you can call it it's pretty much with negligible mass so which one of these three particles or rays would have the maximum chance to break down the wall or to do any kind of breaking whatsoever and the answer would be the stone with the mo with the highest mass so the heaviest stone if you throw it on the wall would be having the highest chance of breaking down the wall or at least uh, doing something to break down the wall putting a dent on that or something like this so likewise is the case in this analogy the stones can be replaced with the alpha beta and gamma radiations 
and the wall can be any medium it can be it can even be air so as it go as it pass through the air the air molecules would be ionized and the maximum ionization effect would be obtained by the alpha particles so they have the highest mass and the highest momentum and these are not easily deflected as you can see over here as well so the more the mass in simple words the more the mass the more the ionization power so comparison from here is alpha particles with the greatest ionization ability and gamma with the least now we get back to the table characteristic table and we were writing down the same thing over here you see in this one row we have written the same thing uh, in our other lesson and I told you ionization ability and penetrating power will be studying separately so alpha rays because you can see they have the highest mass they have the highest ionization ability gamma are the radiations so they have the lowest ionization ability in comparison let's take a look at the next thing which is the penetrating power and then the question is how do we define penetrating power for these radioactive rays so penetrating power refers to the ability of the rays to pass through different materials not to make produce the ions but their ability to pass through different materials so you can write down the definition over here once again it is uh, being stated in the context of radioactive rays so their ability when I say the word there it means uh, of radioactive rays so their ability to produce sorry to pass through a substance their ability to pass through a substance that is referred as the penetrating power another thing is let's talk about the alpha particles before we complete this analysis let's talk about the alpha particles so the alpha particles consist of two protons two neutrons which are essentially the nucleus of the helium because we get rid of the electrons and what, whatever you left with we call that alpha particles so because they have large mass they have low penetrating power and they can be stopped by a sheet of paper okay because if you take a look over here at this characteristic table so you see in this one the alpha particles are stopped by a sheet of paper and even if you don't have any sheet of paper they will be stopped by to a few centimeters even by the air and matter of fact these are stopped by the sheet of paper or even to a few centimeters by the air precisely because they have less penetrating power so penetrating power of alpha beta and gamma radiations it depend on their ionizing power or you can call ionizing ability radiation which has a stronger ionizing power will have 
lower penetrating effect. The radiation emission loses some of its energy each time an iron pair is produced. So you see the particles, the alpha particles, they were having the maximum or the highest ionizing ability. So most of the energy would be used to produce the ions. And once they ion, uh, ionize something, with each time they ionize something, their energy is decreased. So they won't be having enough energy to penetrate through the substance because their energy is kind of wasted in the process of breaking down the substance. So alpha particles, they lose energy very quickly. as they move through a medium it can be air it can be any other medium sheet of paper or anything after a short distance in medium the alpha particles would have lost almost all of the energy So the particles, so alpha particles have lowest penetrating power. And you see the first one, these are the alpha particles. You can see two protons, two neutrons. So the alpha particles, they are stopped by the sheet of paper. They cannot even penetrate to the, to the sheet of paper. The beta particles, they can penetrate through the sheet of paper, but then they are blocked by the sheet of aluminum. So they can travel to a few millimeters of the aluminum foil. And if we compare about the starting point, so the beta particles can travel to like 30 to 100 centimeters from the starting point. And then you have the last one, the lead block. The gamma particles, sorry, the gamma rays, they can even pass through the sheet of aluminum and they are blocked by the block of lead. So they have the highest penetrating power. They can penetrate through the sheet of paper, they can penetrate through the aluminum block, and they can, um, to some extent, like a small percent, very small percentage, can also penetrate through the lead block a very small percentage but we assume that they are blocked by the uh, lead block so alpha particles can be stopped by paper beta particle can pass through the paper but they are stopped by a uh, thin metal sheet thin metal sheet it can be any other metal but what we are saying is they can be stopped even by a very light metal which is aluminum okay aluminum sheet is a very thin sheet so what the meaning is they can be stopped by even a thin sheet of metal and obviously if you place uh, some heavier metal for example iron or copper or lead they would obviously be stopped because they are even stopped by a thin sheet of aluminum then gamma rays pass through these two, but they are stopped by a block of lead. So 
So the places where you have the radioactive rays, what substance do you use to use to block or to contain the radioactive rays? We use the concrete blocks or the lead blocks because we have to uh, make adjustments for the gamma rays. The other two would be obviously blocked but we have to compensate for the gamma rays as well. So we need to... Uh, so the first one we have which is the correct comparison of the penetrating power and the ionizing power of the alpha particles and the gamma radiations. Okay, so greater penetrating power and greater ionizing power. So greater penetra uh, penetrating power has to be for the gamma rays. They can pass through the sheet of paper, they can pass through the thin sheet of metal. They are only blocked by a thick uh, lead block or concrete block. So gamma from here and ionizing power has to be for the alpha particles. So they always go against each other. If one of the substance they have high penetrating power, they would obviously be having lower. Which statement is true for all three types of radiation? Alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. The first one, they are completely absorbed by the thin sheet, by the thin aluminum sheet. Alpha can be absorbed, beta can be absorbed, but not the gamma rays. So A can't be the right answer. They are deflected by the electric field. In the characters characteristic table we studied, alpha and beta can be deflected by the electrical field because they have a charge. Gamma rays have no charge and they cannot be deflected by the electric field. Uh, they emit light. Uh, like they do not emit light okay they are not a source of light so that is just totally uh, mismatched here the last one they ionize gases so alpha beta and gamma they can ionize the gases it that's a different thing that's a separate debate like which one is having the highest ionizing effect that's a separate thing but all of them can at least ionize the gases so let's take a look at the next one which row states the nature and range of beta particles in air so first of all beta particle what is the nature the beta particles are fast moving electrons so these are essentially the electrons and what is their range they can travel through if there is no aluminum block or a sheet of aluminum or any metal then they can travel to a few centimeters like 30 40 50 60 70 they can travel uh, that many centimeters in the air so it has to be B if you place a sheet of aluminum and they would be blocked to a few centimeter only to a few centimeter by the sheet of aluminum or any other metal but in free air where you don't have any sheet of metal they can travel to quite a few centimeters like plenty of centimeters close to a meter not exactly but less than that there we have the next one which particle has the smallest mass so gamma ray is not there because gamma ray would not be then called the particle so alpha particles they are the heaviest ones neutron Proton, they are all they, these are also heavier ones. Electron is the lightest particle among these. And let's take a look at the last one. 
three types of radiations emitted by unstable nuclei are electron helium nuclei now what are the helium nuclei the helium nuclei are alpha particles and electromagnetic radiations which is the gamma rays so electrons are the beta particles so electrons the beta particles uh, helium nuclei the alpha particles and electromagnetic radiation the gamma rays So for this one, we'll be having C as the right answer. Now if we get back to the table over here, 